Lens, there's a really interesting thread here on Techno Reddit about Amelia Lens, which I'm really interested in to, to kind of um, talk about a bit, see some of the top comments people mentioned here, um, and see what people are talking about. So, this is a topic here coming up from the Techno subreddit. Again, I recommend people check it out. If you're obsessed with electronic music like I am, electronic underground, electronic culture, that sort of malarkey, please check out the Techno subreddit. It's the best place to get all your kind of techno related news on the uh, on the internet website at the moment so and it's a pretty good community people are a bit nice on there it's not as toxic as other, other subreddits i might be honest so there's not a lot of name calling there are some favorites on there there are some people that people despise you know everyone's got their biases but for the most part it's a pretty solid community so there's this thread on here there's a lot of talk about amelia lens about peggy goo about some of the girls black madonna you know some people who think you know there, there is a lot of um confusion as to why some of these people have become so successful over the last few years um so quickly i guess um there was a real there was a real yearning in the electronic music scene for djs that didn't look like the standard guys that we see all the time playing at all the festivals right there was a particular kind of person that was playing at the same parties all the time and i guess there was a bit of a confluence it seemed like there was a bit of a there was a bit of a, a big bang moment where there was, there was a group of really forward-thinking promoters making cool new festivals who are up to like getting new artists involved in their festivals and profiling and showcasing better or new not better new talent fresh new talent and with that also came the need for different voices right whether there were different people for different races and creed different genders different sexual orientations these people need to also be involved in the conversation to make it a bit more exciting and i think it all kind of uh, conversion in some people or some women that were around during the time who were very good at DJing anyway who happened to take advantage of it were able to kind of ride that wave pop and continue going on and kind of further their um their prospects and their um their career trajectory and their gigs and all that sort of like which i've got no problem with i think it's fine i think it's perfectly fine to lean into whatever um thing that separates you from the pack and to sort of use that to kind of catapult you and get to another platform because i think by and large i think even if you put a gun to your head of most of the fucking female dj haters out there they can't really say categorically that said dj is crap at what they do they might not like some of the music they play but you can't say as a dj that they're not good right these even peggy goo black the madonna charlotte the way emily lens but Emily lens specifically is the one that probably is kind of gets most of the slack and sometimes maybe peggy goo with her brand of collaborations and maybe the fact that she's blown up so quickly over the years and blah 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 blah, blah um is that as per usual in all areas of life the the the, the, the top five or one percent are the ones that get all the opportunities i think it happens in every industry right we see it happening it's the law i don't know what the law is but there's a because the common term behind it right the one percent or top five percent are the ones that get all the opportunity everyone else has to fight for the scraps and even if you do kind of become a little bit more egalitarian you do you know it's a bit more balanced in terms of gender you're still going to have the same um problems that happen with the male dominated scene happening again nowadays with this kind of scene we're having now we're seeing it now right because i'm sure there's some girls out there that despise those girls that i mentioned because they think they're not talented they think they're just all about the social media they think it's all an image thing i'm pretty sure that that's happening conversations around you know bars and clubs around the world some girls who think they're super talented or think they've been working harder than these girls and these other people have been given opportunities it's not fair blah blah, blah. whereas i tend to think everyone plays a role i think you need an immediate lens in order to get a uh, dj a Dr. Rubenstein, right? You need these people in order to kind of fester somebody else. I think without them, you don't have the reaction. So you need that thing that you hate, that thing that you despise in order to force a reaction. I'm pretty sure, um, what's his name? Uh, like Dead Mouse, all those kind of people. I'm pretty sure in the EDM world, there's kids that grow up and think, oh, those guys are corny, right? And they want to have, and they want to provide a different way of presenting an EDM, or they think that, oh, I can do this thing better. And you react to it by doing the work, by putting yourself out there, not by criticizing on behind your keyboard, but you decide, you know what, I'm going to start DJing too, but I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to do it, it's all about the music. It's not going to be about this helmet stuff. I'm gonna, I don't know, whatever your, your thinking is. So I think these people, are, they play an integral role. Number one, in appeasing the general masses, because there's going to be people out there, general fan people that just want, you know, uh, cookie cutter microwaveable instant kind of music that sounds like that or whatever and there's going to be people that want the other stuff so they, they all play into each other but the immediate lens thing is interesting because i think a lot of it has to do with what she looks like i think unfortunately because she's a former model um it just i'm a, I'm, I'm i'm sure if you spoke to her honestly she would admit that some of the opportunities that came to her were partly because she could dj proficiently and the fact that she looks amazing on camera right those things are not going to hurt your overall appeal your overall creative trajectory i think everyone has to be aware that you know it's entertainment it's art it's creative culture it's creative it's creativity in, in general so you're having to kind of in general um you're having to
present yourself in a way, right? Presentation is very important. The way you present yourself, the way you conduct yourself on social media, the way you play your songs, how you conduct yourself behind the decks is all adds to it. I mentioned, I mentioned before about DJ Harvey. Reason why I like DJ Harvey and Ricardo Villalobos is 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 it's mostly about who who they are as a person away from the music, right? It's not even about the decks. It's about what they what they represent. Um, how they compose themselves, what they talk about in interviews, the lack of interviews that they give in terms of Ricardo Villalobos' case, those all add to the enigmatic factor that adds their DJ as a fan. So if Emilia lends, if she lends it, if she leans into no pun intended her looks and whatever it may be, then well, there's no harm behind it. And if promoters think, if promoters can recognize that she gets a megazillion, if, if all you gotta do is go in boiler room and see the people that get the most views, just book them on a festival. So if you're seeing this girl gets more views than any other person, I don't blame the promoter for booking them, right? I just think they play different roles. But I also don't think if you're an underground DJ or female underground DJ, you necessarily need to be sniping at Amelia Lenz. Like that probably isn't someone you need to be conversating with. She's not even in your same bracket. It's about creating your own little scene, creating your own little niche. And at the end of the day, really, I think even for me, having DJed in a bar or continue DJing in bars now, the dream isn't just to like, you know, to be a high fly DJ going all over the world. The dream is just to be able to play this music all the, every single day, have no job, have no job apart from being a DJ, sustain yourself, be able to pay rent, be able to pay your bills, pay your mortgage, take your wife or boyfriend out for a couple of dinners here and there, go on holiday, you know, be able to buy your parents some nice stuff. And that's it. That's kind of the, the requirements. Just be want to be able to sustain yourself on a salary of let's say fifteen hundred pounds a month playing music that you love, right? That's as opposed to going to working for the man. So the fact that you're sniping at somebody that's earning the most amount in the DJs, like the kind of top one percent, isn't necessarily fair because they're playing a particular role and everyone else is playing another role. But anyway, this thread on Techno Subreddit says, "What about Amelia Lynn? So this um post on Amelia on Amelia Lynn the following: This um, this guy on here said, um, "Lately, everywhere I look, I've been bombarded with Amelia Lynn's." Um, so um, the marketing is ridiculous. When did all this happen? She's headlining almost every festival and being promoted like crazy. Yet all I hear from her is generic big room acid. Anyone seen her in a club or festival? I wasn't impressed, to be honest. Is this me or is that simply marketing? Now, that's a valid question. And I think by and large, I would have to agree. I've never really been a fan of her DJing. I think it's probably in that kind of realm of just playing all the bangers for an hour, which I don't mind. But it's not for me personally. I think it's not her fault that she gets booked for big festival stages and big nights and big clubs. She plays really, you know, a particular kind of techno, a particular kind of electronic music that's suited to that kind of one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, one hour, 32 hour kind of banger set. She can do really, really well. Anything apart from that, it kind of starts to uh, dip down a little bit in quality. But again, it's all horses for courses. I prefer to see DJs that are playing, you know, for six hours at a time or four hours at a time. That's what I kind of like to see or, a, or a, probably a bit more of an eclectic taste. It's not for me, but I also think it serves a purpose, right? If you go and see her play at Coachella, you might want to see her play a banging one hour and a half techno set of all bangers. You don't really want to hear her go through a, a soundscape of tunes because there's not enough time to do that in an hour 30. You need longer to do that. And maybe the sets she's doing, maybe what she prefers is to come in one hour 30 and fuck off. Do you know what I mean? I, which I don't have a problem with. But the issue is that, unfortunately, this is where the artist has to come in and kind of tell their promoters to pump the brakes once they become popular, once a DJ pops, you see, you saw it happening with Seth Truxler, you saw it happening with Dixon, but he was, he was able to pull back. You saw it happening with DJ Harvey when he got his green card, he was able to pull back. You see it happen to Jamie Jones during the whole Hot Creations times. There comes a point when a DJ blows Luciano back in the day, Ricardo Lobos back in the day when he kind of blew up, and Marco Carolla, um, Solomon. When they get really popular, Dax J, um, Rod Had, um, Bruce for a little bit, like when they blow, it, that machine just goes, kudum! right it doesn't they don't particularly get there's no gears they just go all the way to 10 and i think it's responsibility of the dj or the artist to be like hey management agent let's relax a bit because what happens is that like in all music right some of the biggest people are probably the the, the masters of it right the beyonce's the jay-z's the kanye's the drake's um the rihanna's they're the masters of the idea of like when you're at the top of the pinnacle you have to know that this music is so I don't know. It's been it, there's so much quick turnaround behind it. Attention spans are so short. Everyone says the same thing, but essentially people get bored of you very quickly. So the fact that what you can do in order to kind of build demand, same with you know um, this um, serendipitous moment with DJ Harvey where he overstayed his visa and he couldn't leave America. That five year period, or ever how long that period was, built up a desire and a demand to see this guy again. So as a DJ, the thing you have to really be conscious of is that you can't overexpose yourself. You need to be able to balance the idea of like. You know, making loads of money, um, understanding that it's a very short window, if, especially if you're the kind of DJ like that Amelia Lens is, you, you, you're, you're aware that maybe in 20 years time or 
10 years time people won't more want to see you to the same demand they want to see you now and you need to kind of milk it as much as you can and if you're smart with your money and you invest and you buy some property like um who that heard speaking about it? like fucking danny days he, he's like he's got property he, you know he's invested in some sort of smart stuff that could then sustain you for the long term and then in general you're just djing for fun and you've got money kind of in the background that's kind of paying your rent and allowing you to kind of uh, live your lifestyle as you please but you have to be very conscious about that balance, about making sure that you're not overexposed. Because that's what ends up happening. Because now it's not a conversation about whether or not she's a good DJ. It's um, about a conversation of like, she's being forced down my throat. And I feel like I, I can't say that I don't like her because everyone else likes her. Same with Peggy Goo. Same with the Black Madonna. Same with Nastia. Same with all these people. All these girls shot the wit. That's what they're suffering from. It's like overexposure. But I also understand in their regard that it's a short, it's a short window, man. You, you don't have that long to kind of make that much, that kind of money, especially once you're red hot, right? Why not kind of lean into it? And as well, I would think, I don't know what, if not it's true or not, which is kind of the, 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 the side bit about life is that in general, especially in the entertainment world, for the most part, female actresses or female actors um, tend to, um, their earning capability tends to diminish the older they get especially if you're somebody that relies a lot on your looks right um i don't know why it is the way hollywood is like that where you know the in the opposite in the men's field the older you get the more money you're getting right up at chino robert and all these guys are working you know continuously of course because they've got great directors that kind of want to work with them but for the most part most hot women tend to kind of dip or no, to tend to kind of have a low in their career when they get older because usually, I don't know if it's the production companies or if it's the investment bankers or if it's the flipping directors, tend to usually always go for like the younger, hot thing that's out and about. So that may be influencing the DJ decisions too nowadays, right? In the DJ, like these girls probably think, you know what, I'm only going to look this hot for a period of time and I need to take advantage of it, which again, you don't have any issue with. But I think this is, this is what happens when you're overexposed. It's less about her as a DJ and more so about her being pushed in your face, which is a real, real shame. Um, some other, um, some other um, quotes here from another post that says the following. Um, you got to make a buck somehow. Musicians' careers are like athletes' careers as well, as like I mentioned, in a way. Their window to make good money can be quite small. Sometimes they have to exploit it while they can. Look at Danny Days, for example. Big release on Hot Nature, uh, Crash 2012. Now writes whatever the fuck he wants. Right? That's true. Danny Days kind of gave a really good example. I think on Rave Curious, where he spoke about how uncomfortable... I think he spoke about even the Resident Advisor article, how uncomfortable he was with the big release on Hot Creations. And he kind of, you know, wasn't comfortable with the scene he was getting associated with and where he was playing. And as well... The, the thing about producing, I'd, I'd assume, same with Danny Dades, is that what you produce or what blows or what kind of pop makes you pop no, won't necessarily be the song that you necessarily... Like, they always say, it's like, what is that? I've been a... What's that phrase? Something like that. You've been... um I've been a... What's that thing called? um An overnight success 10 years in the making, right? The idea of, like, you've been working diligently all, all this time for 10 years, putting out SoundCloud tunes. No one's been paying attention. There's one tune you put out, blows up, but then it sounds nothing like your previous catalog. It's just something you're experimenting with. Then suddenly you're getting booked to play in places where they play that kind of music. That's not the music that you actually play to DJ. And then when you go there and you get bored of playing this, that music that doesn't really represent you, people completely get turned up and like, oh, who the fuck's that? I don't want to hear that shit. So I understand the kind of that trepidation that comes with it. Um, so that's what it says there. What else? And you have a good comment here to mention. On one hand, she's filling an important role in this scene, which is essentially catering for the masses at the beginning fair weather techno scenes as a genre exposed in popularity. Her mass appeal can be attributed to a mixture of good marketing, charisma, influence, and safe popular music choices. Um, every genre naturally has those type of players. Again, which I said before, it's inevitable. That said, I get why more uh, involved fans of the genre, i.e. other DJs and producers, might be frustrated and look down on the fact that she basically tracks, um, she basically lacks any sort of subtlety and plays the most obvious techno choices music choices in order to appeal to masses it's sort of like when somebody first goes into a genre and just downloads the top 100 charts instead of curating a personal selection anybody can do that but only the most clever lucky charismatic few end up getting away with it the rest of us have to dig or else bring something unique to the table all this aside i'm from the middle of canada where techno generally is still incredible underground so i jump at the chance to see her just for the party i, I trust she brings it exactly there, there we go so everything you said before is completely true there is this idea that you know there are everyone's got a role to play i don't think that she's taking away any jobs from or taking a spot from any underground dj for the most part i don't think they have the they're even in the same conversation in terms of booking in terms of fee in terms of all that exposure what sort of stuff in terms of um gate in terms of just in general as well there's a there is a a reality check too in terms of just how many people you can actually bring to a club clubs are 
Clubs must take, clubs must, you know, it must cost an arm and a leg to run a club. I always have aspirations of having my own bar, right? Similar to like Le Deux Cafe, the, the legendary bar that Michel Lamy had. But I don't, I didn't, I'd imagine running an actual club or a bar must cost an arm and a leg to do, especially the first couple of years or the first four years. It must be brutal running a bar, no one there, all the setup costs, paying security, running out of money. It must be insane. So there must be something to the idea that there are some people that are just, it's unfortunate. If, not, if you don't like them a lot but they're able to bring people to the club they can bring people through the door they are box office uh popularity there's nothing you can contest about it so that's been acceptance with some people with some artists that hey you're not in the same conversation as this person they just bring in more people through the door it's, and it's unfortunate it's on un, it, it gets on your nerves it's annoying but there's nothing you can do they just they just they just bigger right they're just a bigger person it is what it is um and again, like I said, I think nowadays with the success or the, with the popularity of techno, the actual the good thing I think that's happening now at the moment, especially with somebody like a, like an Amini Lens, or so, with this popularity of people that are blowing up with business techno, whatever you call it, casual techno, is that it's opening the floodgates to everybody. Everyone's getting exposed to the sound. So eventually, what ends up happening for the most part, you you come into a, a genre, you get exposed to one person. And then through a series of events and through a series of kind of just digging deep and reading pay, reading websites and going on Instagram pages, you get exposed to other artists that lead to other artists and you suddenly go through a rabbit hole and suddenly you get exposed to a whole different scene. So they're a good gateway drug. Because I think, you know, you can't get a worse, there's, you can't really say they're a bad gateway drug to flipping electronic music scene. Peggy Goo, Black Madonna, um, Nastia, uh, Amelia Lenz, they're pretty decent, I think, as a gateway drug to come into a scene. I'm not really mad at it personally. So again, I'm not... I have sympathy for her and I get I understand people that are annoyed by it, but I think in general, if she's not for you, just keep it moving and get somebody else in general. Right? Let's see what she's posted so far. I haven't been on Instagram in a while. Let's see what she's posted on here. But yeah, the Instagram thing might be annoying, but again, I, I don't know. This is the social media age we live in, isn't it? She should she should take advantage of everything that's kind of like at her hands right now at the moment. I don't really see a problem with it personally. Um let's see the picture of it here. But yeah, here's her Instagram page that she kind of updates quite popular again. But yeah, again, see, she serves a purpose, isn't it? It's quite just cool to see DJ that looks like this behind the decks, isn't it? That isn't the same sort of dude that you always see at festivals. And she she seems to play really good music. She has nice merch on as well. That looks really nice. People tend to like it as well. Yeah, why not? I don't see it. I don't really see a problem with it personally. Um... She's talking about her what? What's, what's really, guys, I'm so excited. Finally shared the winning design of the Jochim Roka. This is the first official um, Exhale What OFC merch ever and will be exclusively for sale during the 24-hour event at Awakenings. Um, only 90 pieces in black and 90 pieces in white, so you need to get there fast. You know what? I'm surprised more DJs don't do more merch. I think maybe it's a corny thing. They get afraid of what... I would buy merch off a DJ selling it at the booth any day of the week, man. If a big DJ played somewhere and brought some merch with them, I'd buy it right there. I don't tend to buy it online because I can't be able to wait and it's EU shipping where I saw Malaki. But I don't tell why more DJs don't bring a box of merch with them and just sling it at the event. Maybe it's a bit, you know, it's not a cool thing for the bar. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's it's a strange thing. I don't know why people don't do more merch, especially nowadays, like DJs being... Do you remember when everyone was wearing those t-shirts with the DJ's birthdays... Um, take inspiration for the Givenchy uh date of birthing i think ricardo tishi had the date of birth like he's 74 whatever it is tishi and everyone's like doing the t-shirts of djs at dixon whatever da, da, da. I, that that time was probably not the best time because it wasn't maybe as popular as mainstream as it was nowadays but nowadays i think those shirts will probably do really well if they came about if they were fresh nowadays and i guess the designers putting out prints on ever pressing that sort of malarkey I'll, I'll be i'd be i'd be down to wear the, uh, my favorite dj's merch like I'd, I'd be on it especially if they sold it at the kind of event where it's on there in it um the t-shirt is quite cool i quite like the design i'm not, I'm not mad at it at all um t-shirt thing at the back excel i will be make sure they don't sell out during the night so people with late entry tickets can also get them there's also another design which i'll show you soon that will also be available i also like to say thanks to everyone who participated in this contest i saw so many great designs and it was not easy decision thank you all oh wow she picked a designer again that that's again reason why someone like that is successful right that connection to the fans people feel as if they know her she's getting people to put post up and design things and she's choosing winners there's no you know it's not it's not surprising that she's become as popular as she is nowadays but um yeah okay I'm, I'm not mad at it personally i don't really have a problem with her i think it's cool to see i think it's a good change video of her playing in where's this in fabric is this fabric in madrid i think isn't it in, in spain is it fabric in spain i think so you didn't come to tell me how it's done 
you go. She's smashing it. Good girl. Mondays what? Mondays, what's the teacher say? Mondays. She's quite good at the dancing as well. There's people holding signs in the rave, which is quite cool. Instagram stories. She's all the time. But yeah, I don't have a problem with it whatsoever, man. Oh, she's got, oh, she's got the clear decks. Is that the clear decks or the white decks? I know it's a white decks. I thought it's the clear. People in her team are taking videos for her. Yeah, no, I'm not mad at it, man. She smashed it. Oh, she's playing back like a bench block. That's a good little collaboration there. I like that. I'm not mad at it, man. I'm not mad at it. I think everyone's got their place to play in, in the techno scene. Having some breakfast and stuff. Premiere of her track with this guy, Aerod. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm not mad at it, man. I'm not mad at it. Like I said, everyone's got their, their role to play. Let's all be family. Let's all be friends. Let's all get along with each other and not be mean and stuff and let people live how they want.